They're together now, mother and daddy. And they're happy. I really want to believe that. Then go ahead and believe it. It doesn't hurt to believe. There were so few people here at the funeral. It just doesn't seem fair. He was a man who kept to himself, Miss Emily. He just didn't have any close friends. But he helped so many people in this town. He was a good doctor. Well, there weren't very many patients either. People just didn't want to travel all this way to see a doctor, especially when the clinic opened in town. Well, what difference does it make? The people that loved him were here. Yes. But you'll never know how much he loved you, Miss Emily. This is incredible. If Miss Emily yeah. knew... The headlines in the paper, Molly, it was about his burial, his funeral service. But how could that be? Well, the, the body was wrongly identified. I, I don't know how. Somehow the deputy on the, hand, on, on the train was handcuffed to the wrong man. I, I can't explain it. Maybe you're mistaken. From what I read about the train wreck, there were so many bodies washed out into the river. Uh, no. no mistake, Molly. It's him. He's from Monticello. And he's, he's well known there. And if he goes back now, someone will recognize him sooner or later. But the fingerprints. What about the fingerprints? Didn't they prove? No, Molly. I faked that experiment. You faked? I used his own prints to convince him that he was Kirk Michaels. I must have been crazy to do such a thing, but I did it. But you did it for your daughter, for Emily. That's why I was so anxious to get Dr. Wellman's opinion about Kirk's amnesia. I wanted that amnesia to be permanent, hopeless. I, I, I wanted that young man to, to spend the rest of his life as Emily's husband. Oh, dear Dr. Gold, how could you have been so foolish? Yes, it was foolish and desperate. Sometimes the prospects of the future makes one do things like that. You understand what I'm saying, don't you, Molly? No, I, I don't. I won't always be here, Molly, to take care of Emily. There won't be anyone. No, that's, that's just not true. See, I hope that Kirk could take my place. My fictitious Kirk. I'll never tell them, Dr. Galt. They mustn't know. Emily must be happy for as long as she can. Hot breakfast. Oh, no, Molly, don't bother. I don't feel like eating anything. Uh, just wait and see Miss Emily with some nice hot food in front of you. You'll feel different. Now, I won't be ten minutes. It's ironic. Twenty-four hours ago, I was feeling guilty because I thought I was taking you away from your father. Yeah. You weren't taking me away from anyone. I was going with you. Is any wife would go with her husband. Yeah, but you weren't very happy about it. You didn't really want to go to Monticello. I wanted to be with you, which is where I belong. Now that dad, Daddy's gone, I... I just couldn't care less about staying here. This was my home only as long as he was here. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know what's going to happen now with the house, with Molly. She has a sister. Oh, yeah, she has a sister. She's married and has... Four children, her husband drinks. Molly goes and takes care of them all whenever her sister's sick, but it's only out of a sense of duty. They don't get along? No. I don't think Molly could count on her sister for anything. That's too bad. Yeah. Of course, she could stay on here, at least until the house is sold. <laughs> the way things are, that could be a long time. I'll get that. No, no, let Molly pick up in the kitchen. It's Mr. Voorhees. Who? Voorhees, the attorney. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you, Molly. Hello, Mr. Voorhees. Oh, how are you, Emily? 
I uh, didn't get a chance to see you at the um, services. I'm doing all right. I'm sorry I missed you, too. Oh, by the time I arrived, you and your husband had already left. Uh, I'd hoped to speak to you both about your father's estate. His estate? Well, I, I know that's much too strong a word to use for what your father left behind. But uh, he did uh, make a will and make a couple of uh, specific bequests. And I was wondering when I could come over and uh, discuss them with both of you. Uh, I really don't know. I, uh, I know this is much too soon. But uh, perhaps we can make an appointment for next week. Next week? Uh, well, I, I don't know that we'll be here next week, Mr. Voorhees. You see, before, before all this happened, my husband and I were planning to go to Monticello. Mm-hmm, I see. And, and the plan still holds, huh? <sighs> yes, I, I suppose so, as soon as we can make all the necessary arrangements. Hmm. Well, in that case, uh, perhaps you would uh, prefer to discuss the matter soon. Uh... This morning, in fact. Uh, I could be over there in a half an hour. All right. I, I guess it is best that we get it over with. Now, it won't be more than a few minutes. Uh, there isn't really much to discuss. You know, your, your father wasn't a wealthy man. No. He wasn't rich. But he was a wonderful man, wasn't he? He always gave so much. Yes, well, uh, thank you. Uh, I'll see you later, then. Goodbye. Well, now, come on, let's try that breakfast. Come along, Miss Emily. Kirk, no arguments. You think your friend would like something to eat? <laughs> no, I think he's a little too nervous about this morning. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty excited myself. It hasn't hurt your appetite, though, has it? Are you kidding me? I'm crazy about American breakfast. In Europe, only thing they serve for breakfast is like coffee and rolls. The Americanization of Kelly McGrath. I'm glad you like our little country, Kelly. Oh, I'm crazy about living in America. Of course, I was brought up that way. Uh, it seems like everywhere Mom and Dad lived, there was a large colony of Americans, and they sort of uh, ran over to that area. Well, that's only natural, I suppose. And you, uh, you attended American schools, too, didn't you? Yeah, whenever possible. But there were a couple years there where there wasn't a school available, and, and I had to have a tutor. I guess Mom and Dad were pretty determined to keep me as their all-American boy. And do you think you are? I'm a puppeteer. I'm very glad to know that Mrs. Saxon enjoyed the puppets. Well, Kelly, what is it exactly that you're going to be doing this morning? It's what they call a promo. You know, one of those announcements that the station makes in between the commercial and the program. Telling you to mm -hmm. tune into some other program, is that it? Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Saxon thought that the puppets would make great little station announcers, and uh, naturally I agreed with her. <laughs> well, I do too. I think it's a very clever idea, don't you, Mike? Mm-hmm. Are you going to be paid for doing this, Kelly? Sure, union wages. It's not very much money, but it will put some in my pocket, and I won't have to depend on you and Aunt Nancy so much. No. Well, your mom and dad are sending you money, too, aren't they? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Kelly, have you written to them? No. I, I guess I've been too busy. Well, don't you think they'd like to know about your, uh, your instant success here in Monticello? Sure. I'll write them. Uh, yeah, as soon as I get a chance. I'll get the Cliff, good morning. Oh, uh, good morning, Mr. Carr. I'm sorry to bother you so early. I thought you were heading straight to the courthouse this well, morning. Well, I was. It's just that I have some bad news and it won't keep. What's wrong? Well, it's about our client, Logan. Not only doesn't he have custody of the kid now, but we've lost the letter. Looks like he'll never get custody now. into the uh, dining room, Cliff. Uh, have you had breakfast? Oh, no, thank you. I'm in no mood for food. You can understand why I came here instead of going to the courthouse. Yes. Hello, Cliff. Oh, good good morning. morning. How are you? Would you like some coffee? Yes, please. Oh, this is Kelly. You haven't met, have you? Oh, no, I haven't had the pleasure. Uh, how do you do? Which one's Kelly? <laughs> He's Kelly, silly. <laughs> this is you be the unicorn. I told you about our, uh, 
Our uh, nephew, uh, Cliff. This is my law associate, Cliff Nelson. Uh, hi, Kelly McGrath. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Nice uh, meeting you. Both of you. <laughs> Listen, you can have my seat, uh, Mr. Nelson. I'm on my way out. I've got to go over to WMON. Oh, he's a little early, though, Kelly. Hmm? Yeah, but I want to go uh, rehearse in front of the cameras and all that, Nancy. Kelly's doing some promotional spots for the TV station. Understandably, he's quite excited about it. That's wonderful. Uh, need a good lawyer to handle your contract negotiation? <laughs> I don't think he's at that stage quite yet. Uh, hey, but don't you worry. The minute they start talking... Uh, Business, uh, I'll have Uncle Mike's firm take care of all the arrangements. Mm -hmm. Great breakfast, Aunt Nancy. I'm See you later. Like Bye-bye. Right. Do well there. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hey, nice meeting you there, Mr. Nelson. Yeah, uh, good luck today. Uh... You too. You'll be, uh, break a horn. <laughs> oh, coffee. I need this after last night. Oh? Oh, uh, yeah, um, uh, I, I didn't get much sleep. See, I, I was worried about Logan's case. Well, what did happen exactly? Well, couldn't he find the letter? Or is it what? Is that the letter that Raven sent April and Draper? Yes, it's Exhibit A in the custody suit. Proof positive that Raven was quite willing to give away her child. To anyone except the real father. Well, April had the letter. Couldn't she find it? No, she found it all right, and she was going to give it to Logan, and then Raven appeared. So what happened? Well, she lost it. I mean, Raven. April and she were on the terrace. A raven grabbed it out of her hand and it accidentally fell over the edge. Oh. Accidentally? That's terrible. Didn't Logan try to recover? Oh, sure. He ran to the elevator, but by the time he got downstairs, it was gone. And wind probably took it halfway to China by now. Do you think it would help if we put an ad in the lost and found of the newspaper? Oh, sure. Lost. One incriminating letter. Please return to the district attorney. You know, it's, it's so typical of what raven would do. They just should have been more careful. Well, anyone can be caught off guard. Look at the way Raven was able to get Jamie away from Logan by simply picking her up at the hospital. You know, I'm beginning to admire her cleverness. Well, frankly, I think being clever shouldn't really win the custody suit for. As a matter of fact, it should hurt her, shouldn't it? Because, I mean, when the judge hears how she schemed and manipulated to get the baby... Well, of course, her scheming might be interpreted as uh, mother love. And that is exactly what she'll say in court. All is fair in love, war, and child custody battles. Well, wait a minute. You can make your point still without the letter. Just have April testify. That is, if Logan will let her testify. He's acting awfully strange about this. What do you mean? Well, he says he doesn't want to call April to the stand and make her testify against Raven because you know, she's been through a lot of difficulty and this would be very hard on her. If you ask me, I think he has a very serious crush on April. Word, you're an early bird. What are you doing here at this hour? Well, I'm not looking for a worm. I was trying to find my wife. I thought she might be with you. Oh, she isn't here at the station as yet. But how come you didn't know that? Well, I just came from the hospital. I've been there since 5.30 this morning. Oh, Miles, you poor thing. You must yes. be exhausted. Help yourself to some coffee. Oh, thank you. That would be good. It's bound to be better than the stuff they give us at the hospital cafeteria. I called home and our uh, housekeeper said that Nicole had already uh, left. I assumed that she'd come to work. She said she had some to do. I expect her a bit later. She called in to say she'd be here about 11. Said she had a doctor's appointment. Doctor's appointment? She didn't tell me about that. Well, I was a bit concerned about that. Isn't she feeling well? Oh, I think I may know what's wrong with her. My wife has an ailment called optimism. I know that Nicole has talked to you about the fact that she, that we want to have a baby. The truth is, she most certainly did. And I told her I thought it was a wonderful idea. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the idea, though she's, uh, she's a little bit concerned about her responsibilities to the station. Oh, Miles, that's nonsense. There's no reason in this world why a, a job should, should be interfered with just by being a mother. Well, at any rate, uh, ever since we did decide... Uh, that it might be a good idea. Nicole has been expecting the wish to become a reality very quickly. I see. So you think that's why she went to see the doctor this morning? I hope so. It's awfully soon. I'm afraid she's going to be disappointed. Miles, I know that Nicole is very anxious to have another child. She'd like to have a little brother or sister for Adam. But my feeling is, for heaven's sake, why stop there? 
Whoa, wait a minute. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. We've only talked about one. That's it. Well, I suppose I'm the old-fashioned type. I believe in large families. I suppose I should change my point of view to fit the fashion of the times. <laughs> well, I, I believe, I hope, that Nicole is just planning on this one, and then, then uh, hopefully she will want to call it... Uh, quits. But even, you know, despite what you say, just the one is going to curtail her job here quite a bit. As a matter of fact, I think that might not be a bad idea. For your information, my dear doctor, I think your wife is altogether too conscientious. There are times, Miles, when I feel she's just working too hard. Come in. Oh, excuse me. No, no, it's all right, Kelly. Come right in. Kelly, how are you? How you doing, Dr. Kavanaugh? Miles. Kelly is going to do some promos for us today. Now, you may not realize this, but you may just have found us a new television star. Have I? Yes. <laughs> After all, it was you who arranged his appearances at the hospital, and it was from that that we asked to see his puppets. Well, I'm glad I could have been uh, of some help. I just want my 10%, please. Uh, Geraldine, if, if Nicole does arrive uh, soon, would you have her call me at my office? Of course, my dear. Kelly, break a leg. That's a fine thing for a doctor to say. <laughs> Very nice. Well, young man, are we all set? Oh, I'm all set, but uh, I think my puppet here is a little nervous. Well, I'm sure you'll all do very well indeed. There's one thing to remember, Kelly. And these will be very brief appearances at first. I don't think they're going to make you a star overnight. Oh, I'm not worried about that, Mrs. Saxon. I can wait to be a star. Two or three weeks. <laughs> All right. Now, here are the scripts that we've prepared. And here's a publicity release about you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is wrong. What's wrong, dear? The name. It says Kelly Pollock. I'm Kelly McGrath. But uh, your family name is Pollock. It was your aunt's maiden name, and her father, Joe Pollock, is a very good friend of mine, so I just assumed... It's just the same. I'm Kelly McGrath. That's what I call myself. Please. Well, of course, Dr. Gall told me about you, Mr. Michaels, about your uh, coming back home to Emily. I'm sure you know how happy he was about that. Yeah, I'm sure he was. Well, it was especially important to him because, well, he was aware of the state of his health. And he'd been concerned about you for some time, Emily. He should have worried more about himself. Well, some people can be remarkably unselfish when, it's, uh, when it comes to people they love. Daddy was unselfish, even with strangers. He was a generous man, there's no question about that. And if he'd had more to leave to his family, he would have done so gladly. But as we all know, it isn't much of an estate. I have his will here. It's a simple document. Um, I made only two bequests. And the first is to Molly Sherwood. To me? Well, it reads as follows. To Molly Sherwood, who has been far more than a housekeeper to this family since she came to live with us, I leave the sum of $10,000. Oh, my. Well, I hardly expected that. Uh, Miss Emily, there is no reason for all that money. Oh, Molly, it's not all that much, especially these days, and I'm sure if Daddy could have, he would have left you more. Molly, he considered you part of the family. Just as we do. Well, as for the uh, for the rest of the estate, uh, consisting of a, um, of a bank account containing approximately twelve thousand dollars, some uh, stocks with an approximate worth of uh, eight thousand more, and the house, well, all that of course uh, belongs to you. Yes, thank you. I uh, I'm afraid it isn't really very much to last you the rest of your life, but now that you have a husband, uh, that's no problem. Emily and I are going to be fine. <laughs> I'm sure you will. But just a minute. There is something else. What about Dr. Galt's life insurance policy? No, there is no mention of a life insurance policy in Dr. Galt's will. But then he may not have thought to include it. But I'm sure I saw a policy in his office desk. Why don't I try and go find it? Excuse me. 
Now, Emily, I, I realize that this talk about your father's estate must be quite distressing to you. Oh, no, I'm all right. And believe me, if there had been nothing at all, my father still would have left me a very rich woman. He left me the legacy of love. And that's the most important thing in life, isn't it? The most important by far. And I'm not alone. I'm very fortunate I have my husband back with me. I found it. No trouble at all. It was in the top drawer of his desk. Oh, take a look here. Yes, it's a life insurance policy with Harry Benson's agency, all right. And the face value is $50,000. $50,000? That, that's a fortune. Are you sure, Mr. Voorhees? Is that what Emily will receive? No, there's no question about it. I'm sure it wasn't easy for Leo to make these payments over the years, but he evidently did. Yes, this policy is definitely in force. $50,000, that's more than enough to get us going. It'll do more than that. It, it might even buy us a home. No, you still have a home. No, Mr. Voorhees, I meant what I said when I told you we were going to Monticello, but maybe this means that we'll be able to, to buy a house there. Hey, no, wait a second. If you're no, still... No, Kirk, it might be enough to, to, for at least a, a down payment on that house. That beautiful, enchanted house. <laughs>